And the move comes as Amazon battles for retail dominance. Its biggest rival, of course, Walmart. The battle between Amazon and Walmart, one of the biggest in corporate America. And from an investor's perspective, it looks like Amazon is getting a bit of a leg up. Its shares are up almost 50 percent year to date. Our next guest is business journalist Jason Del Rey. His book on the Amazon Walmart rivalry is called Winner Sells All. Amazon Walmart and the battle for our wallets. Jason, welcome to the program. So I'm looking at the book now and I've read a few excerpts. I have to say it's certainly got my attention. The book is meant to be a bit of a front row to this rivalry between Walmart uh, and Amazon, 25 years. It seems like Amazon won, as we said. Hmm. How did it happen? How did Amazon get here? I think it's in many cases uh, a big case of the innovator's dilemma at Walmart. They had these profitable super centers printing cash and this little side business growing uh, on this, you know, that they paid a little bit of attention to, but not much. And all along, Amazon's just investing for the long haul, getting a leash from Wall Street not to, you know, print profits right away. And 25 years later, we look and Amazon's market share in online retail in the U.S. is about six or seven times Walmart's. So what did Walmart critically, fatally get wrong? Let's circle back to maybe, let's go back to maybe 1999 or early 2000. If you had to point to one specific decision or one hiring decision that Walmart really missed the boat, what, what was it? I, I have a great anecdote in the book about an early tech employee at Walmart who was leading a team that was experimenting in online retail. Walmart had an online shop. And he went into the CEO's office asking for just a little bit more of a commitment. This was in 1998. And the response was essentially, this business will never be bigger than one of our Sam's Club stores annual sales. And, you know, easy to laugh now, but, you know, kind of understand the skepticism at the time. He packed up his bags. His name is Robert Davis, went to Amazon, spent over a decade there and help the early years of Amazon's growth using a lot of the insights and, and learnings from Walmart in the process. Jason, I'll get back to Amazon in just a moment, but for business leaders watching this, having written this book and done the research that you have, what's the message for the business community in terms of innovate, in terms of when it might be too late, when you might have missed the boat? Yeah, I had a couple key takeaways from reporting out this book. One is uh, maybe obvious, but incentives in business matter and how they interact across different divisions of a company matter. What I mean by that, even in recent years, Walmart's e-commerce leaders were incentivized to grow, not worry about profits. Store leaders incentivized to print profits and worry about the bottom line. That led to a lot of you know internal conflict and essentially lack of speed in execution that they're still trying to make up and they're doing a better job in recent years. Um, another one is uh, just, you know, storytelling in business narratives matter. And mm. the narrative for a very long time that Walmart did not really help, uh, you know, go against was that they are all about physical. They are, you know, not hiring the best technical talent. And just in the last few years, they've had to invest heavily through acquisitions and hirings to make up the ground they seeded for a couple of decades. Well, Jason, one thing you lay out is that Amazon did innovate, innovate, innovate. But the, the flip side of that is that also comes at great expense sometimes. Amazon present day, certainly as large as it has ever been, but also going through some challenges. It just laid off about 5% of its corporate workforce. It, uh, critics would argue, hasn't innovated or created a new product in a meaningful way in, in several years. Is this just to be expected in terms of uh, just a maturing phase, or has Amazon lost its edge? That's a great question. This is absolutely, in my opinion, an inflection point for the company. New CEO in the last two years, Andy Jassy, led the layoffs, led cost-cutting in Alexa, um, shut down a healthcare uh, initiative, and way, you know, and as we talked about, 20, 27,000 corporate layoffs. It's unclear to me, but we should know in the next year whether this is a normal evolution of a company from what Jeff Bezos used to call day one into a mature day two company that just doesn't innovate or grow as quickly as it once did, or whether this is just resetting 
company yeah. expectations and discipline in investments and spending leading to the next phase of growth. You know, my bet is Amazon is not going anywhere, but its morale is not great inside the company right now. Jason, I only have about 15, 20 seconds left. If Jeff Bezos was the innovator of Amazon, Andy Jassy is the what? What will he be remembered as? Oof. Uh, well, we hope he's, he, he should hope it's not just the cost cutter. Um, mm. I would say Amazonians are hoping he's the reinventor. He's the, I'm sorry. Re reinventor. Reinventor. Well, only time will tell. Jason Del Rey, great to have you on the program today. Thank you for your time.